Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our Atlas TI sponsored explorations in Atlas TI. My name is Juliana Barabbas, and I'm going to right away welcome everyone. I, we, our attendees are starting to arrive. I'm going to hand things right over to Naringa Kalpokas, who is our uh, director of training at Atlas in Germany. And uh, Naringa, would you like to take it away? Yeah, of course. I would like to start welcoming all of you to this a webinar series, and as uh, Juliana introduced, I'm Neringa Kalpokas, Director of Atlas TI, and I'm very pleased that the series of webinars is organized by the University of British Columbia and sponsored by Atlas TI, Software for, for Qualitative Data Analysis. Um, the International Qualitative Research Toolkit offers two webinar series. So we have explorations in Atlas TI and we have insights in qualitative research methods. Today, we have a chance to take a look and learn how we can take advantage of Atlas TI in our research. Particularly, our guest speakers will share how they use Atlas TI and what is the outcome of their great job, their projects they are doing right, right now. So we really believe and we strongly believe as Atlas TI that it's very important you know, to support these kind of projects and spread the knowledge all around the world and help qualitative researchers from different areas, different um, backgrounds and different even countries, uh, cultural values uh, learn from Atlas TI and learn from qualitative research. And before I pass the microphone to Juliana, I just wanted to say a few announcements. Um, if after this session you are interested in learning Atlas TI, keep in mind that we have a bunch of free webinars, totally free for you, that you can learn how to use Atlas T Web or how to do qualitative research or how to do a literature review with Atlas TI. So please feel free to visit our website and take a look at all free special topics and general topics we are offering for you. And finally, just because you are interested in a qualitative research and probably Atlas TI, keep in mind that just because you participate in this session, you have a special discount for our courses, premium courses we have and licenses. So just drop an email to me, training at supportatlasti.com and I would be pleased to share uh, those discount coupons as I mentioned and promised to you in this session. So without further ado, do uh, once again welcome all of you in the session and Juliana Barbados. The power of this session and moderation is in your hands. Thank you so much. I am so pleased uh, to welcome all of you who are attending. I'm just uh, going to mention a few housekeeping items. We're going to be taking questions by the Q&A module. So if you have a question, please type it into the Q&A box at any time through the presentation. We're gonna be running about 40 to 45 minutes on the presentation and there'll be about 10 minutes at the end for you to uh, take your questions. So I'll be reading those out on your behalf for the sake of our recording uh, and we'll We'll welcome any comments and questions uh, through that Q&A box, which should be at the bottom of your Zoom screen in your webinar for those who are attending. So welcome again. I just would like to give you now a bit more about our presenters who we are so happy to have with us today. And one, one more item that I'll mention just quickly before we get going, uh, the International Qualitative Research Toolkit was conceived in part um, because of the Thinking Qualitatively Conference, which the Atlas also sponsored this year. Uh, and I, I'll, I'll mention it a little bit more at the end, the recordings for that conference, highly successful, also still available until January of 2022. So I'll mention that again at the end. Um, very rich set of resources for those who are wanting to know more about qualitative research. And I thank Atlas again for their ongoing support and University of Indiana. Collaborative qualitative data analysis using Atlas TI Cloud, a case of cyberbullying. Annie Munaraya, 
<laughs> forgive my pronunciation, Annie, holds a PhD in law from University Technology, Mara, Malaysia, and is currently a senior lecturer at the School of Law and Research Fellow at the Center for Testing, Measurement, and Appraisal, University Uttara, Malaysia. Her research areas are information technology, law, cyber law, and cyber crimes. Yusra Meza Iza holds a PhD in criminal law from University of Lancaster, UK, and is currently a senior lecturer at School of Law and Research Fellow, uh, ASEAN, I'm not, I should have checked on pronunciation, Yusra, uh, Research Institute for Corporate Governance, University Uttara, Malaysia. Her research areas are criminal law, crimes and justice, and cyber crimes. Please welcome our presenters coming to us from Malaysia, Annie and Yusra. Annie and Yusra, please take it away. Thank you so much, uh, Juliana, and thank you also, uh, Naringa, for uh, inviting us. And we're so excited to be uh, here uh, at the Explorations uh, webinar uh, series. And today, as has been mentioned by um, uh, Juliana, uh, we'll be presenting about uh, uh, how uh, our research team harness the power of Atlas DI Web for the purpose of collaborative qualitative analysis for our research. So I'm going to be sharing my screen. Um, okay. Yep. Uh, I, I, uh, I assume everybody can uh, see this. Can, uh, can you, sir, can you confirm if you can see this or not? We're good. Okay. All right. Great, great. So, yeah, um, uh, first and foremost, uh, it is our pleasure to be here. And um, uh, why, why do uh, I say that? Because uh, in the past, uh, both uh, Yusramisa and I, we've been uh, engaging uh, a lot of uh, Atlas TI for the purpose of our uh, analysis for our other projects. But uh, when uh, Atlas TI uh, web, uh, previously known as Atlas Tech Cloud, came in the picture, we were uh, so much uh, excited and delighted that now we can uh, overcome some of the problems that we have uh, in the past. For example, we did on our own machines, and now we can, um, we can uh, work uh, remotely, collaboratively, and what more during this uh, pandemic, okay? So the topic that we have chosen for the presentation today is uh, collaborative qualitative data analysis using Atlas TI Web, a uh, case of cyberbullying, okay? Uh, just a little bit of uh, background before we uh, dig further into uh, our usage of the uh, Atlas TI Web is um, because of the growing concern of uh, bullying in the cyberspace, okay? because it's taken from the word cyber bullying, okay? cyber plus bullying, now it becomes cyber bullying. In the past, when people mentioned it in, your, in our face, for example, so it's a different feeling. But now, given the nature of cyberspace, given the nature of the internet, and what more during this pandemic that everybody all over the world are resorting to online uh, because we need to uh, uh, settle a few, uh, all our work routines, for example, which could happen anytime, anywhere, and it could happen to anyone, not only children, it could also happen to um, adults, yeah? and it can be committed by adults as well, it can be committed by uh, children as well. Now, based on that, um, the background of our studies that uh, this, this concern is also attracted the attention of the Malaysian government, uh, whereby this project is funded by the Malaysian Communications uh, and Multimedia Commission, uh, MCMC in short, to study the adequacy of the Malaysian laws governing cyberbullying. So you will realize by now both uh, me and uh, Yusra Miza, we are from the School of Law of University of Tara Malaysia. So our specialty is on the uh, cyber laws, uh, cyber crimes. Okay, for that matter, we investigated the various laws uh, governing cyberbullying, but not to go very deep into the uh, project itself. I'm going to dive into the uh, the uh, the sample okay, for the data sources for our analysis. We have interviewed nineteen experts for this uh, project, uh, involving people from uh, enforcement, people from uh, advocates and solicitor, people from uh, NGOs. Uh, from the academia, uh, as well as from the health uh, health uh, institutes. Yeah? And uh, all these 19 experts are the people who are um, 
stakeholders of the information about uh, practices uh, and trends and uh, happenings or occurrences of cyberbullying as well as the enforcement and regulators as well. Uh, apart from that, uh, we triangulated the data with an online survey uh, involving 120 persons uh, uh, some of the questions are quantitative uh, in nature, uh, but what we want to focus on in which we use uh, at the CI web is for the open-ended question in the online survey uh, upon which we ask, uh, how do you think or what do you propose uh, for the government to do in case we uh, want to deal with cyberbullying perpetrators as well as cyberbullying victims? Yeah? Now, uh, one of our problems at that time, because this was uh, towards the end of 2020 and early 2021, uh, upon which our project uh, was conducted. At that time, it was a very high cases of COVID-19 uh, occurring in Malaysia, upon which we couldn't travel much. We couldn't even come to the office. We worked remotely. We even carried out the interviews remotely. We um, and then the time has come when we have the all the data in our hands. We were uh, it comes to the stage that we have to analyze the data. Okay, so here is our problem. Here was our problem, uh, upon which last time we um, could gather around in a meeting and then we uh, attend to the uh, analysis or we do the analysis on our FCI desktop. Uh, uh, but now we have. FSTI web. Okay. Now the greatest feature about FSTI web that captured our attention and uh, we decided finally to use it is because we have a number of researchers in our project. Uh, in total, we have six, but those involved in the qualitative analysis, uh, there were four of us uh, from the School of Law of uh, our university. Um, uh, we, we found out yeah, uh, at that time that FSCI web allows for collaborative analysis in the sense that everybody can be locked into uh, the same project, okay, and we can attend to our analysis. That's the best part. I think this feature is very awesome uh, because which we uh, finally get attended to the analysis collaboratively among us okay, to achieve our research questions uh, and objective, okay. So what we did, yeah, uh, these are the steps that we did. Uh, number one is definitely we added the documents to at the CI web. Okay? Um, I, uh, I forgot to mention this at the beginning of the session. I do not intend to teach how to use at the CI web today, but I, it's more like Yusra and I, we wish to share our experiences, what we have gone through, what were the problems that we encountered, and uh, what are the benefits of using uh, at the CI web. Okay? And not so much to indulge on the research itself, we wish to show you okay, what happened in the project and what we did yeah, for the purpose of um, our uh, our uh, analysis. Okay? Now, number one, we added the documents, 19 interview transcripts, plus one um, uh, from the open-ended questions from the online survey that we have uh, conducted from the 120 respondents, we added to the projects. Okay, uh, By we, I mean I, okay? because as the uh, project leader for the analysis project, uh, analysis stage, okay? um, uh, I created the project in my FSCI web account. And number two, I invited, uh, number one, I added the documents. Number two, I invited my research collaborators who are actually my uh, project members. Yeah, uh, I invited three of them. So what we did, okay, uh, I'm just going to swipe, swipe through here. I hope you can still see my screen. Okay. This is um, uh, the interface of my uh, FSCI web. As you can see, there are a number of uh, projects that we have already uh, uh, initiated and completed the analysis using FTC web. These are uh, actual projects set set for this one. Yeah, this is for demonstration. Um, uh, there are some uh, projects, some in the Malaysian language, some in the English. And the best part is you can see the the uh, the icons here, yeah, the avatar here. You can see. Uh, our uh, research collaborators, okay? uh, a few projects, okay? you can see different collaborators and, uh, and 
the one that I want to focus on is this one. Okay, the advocacy of cyberbullying laws in Malaysia. Um, we put in 20 documents, okay, uh, and these are the number of uh, quotes and quotations. And as you can see, these are uh, the research collaborators. This is me, I say it's you. Okay, and then uh, I have, uh, we have uh, Dr. Azlina, uh, Dr. Shamsu, and this is um, uh, Dr. Yusra. Okay, and uh, what I meant by adding the collaborators is uh, after creating the project and adding the documents, I would go to project settings and uh, I would invite my team members. Okay, just, just very simple um, and, and this intuitive uh, interface of ATSCI web uh, makes it even uh, to confirm uh, our decision to use uh, the uh, ATSCI web for the purpose of our analysis. So you can see these are my uh, research collaborators. Okay, let me just swipe that. Okay, and, and number three would be the determination of coding strategy. Okay, what, what we mean by determination of coding strategy is uh, we had four research questions uh, for the project and uh, we have four researchers. So what we did, we divided each one of us to take on one research question. Okay, so uh, throughout the 100, uh, sorry, throughout the 20 documents, I would be working example, I would be working on uh, question number one. Okay, so I will be digging in through all the documents, focusing on only research question one. And another friend, uh, another friend would be working on the second research question, so on and so forth until the uh, fourth research question. So now we know. We know that um, uh, we do not need to go through the entire document, uh, but we still, uh, for example, we cannot control people, uh, we cannot control the informants telling us, uh, for example, we ask question number one, they might be responding to question number four, for example, and in the transcription, it might uh, mention at question number four, but it's actually my answer for research question number one. Okay, So for that matter, we are also uh, able to see each other's work. Okay, uh, which brings me to question uh, to stage number four, okay, which is coding and commenting. Um, after we have uh, conducted the uh, the analysis or during our coding uh, strategy, for example, um, for example, you can see the wordings here. And uh, what is uh, nice okay, is that we are able to see each other's work. Uh, based on the uh, numbers here. So you can see if it was me, then it would be uh, my face, it would be some other friends' uh, faces uh, as well. Now, um, what I uh, like most uh, about the coding process is the ability to take a look at each other's works um, uh, so that I will know that we are working in the same direction. Okay? That is most important. And I would be able to see any mistakes uh, made by my friends. They would be able to see any mistakes I made okay? so that we can tally okay, the coding structure at the time that we are uh, conducting the coding process and commenting as well. Um, we still communicate even though remotely. Now, this is a very interesting feature okay, to my mind uh, and to my friends' minds as well, uh, because we found that um, we do not need to be physically located at one location. We can see each other's work and correct them if there is such need. Okay? And uh, of course, because we uh, approach the data purely inductively uh, without any uh, priori concepts in our mind, we, we give uh, the meaning or true meaning to what the participants say, definitely there will be some overlapping and redundancies, which brings me to stage uh, step number five, which is we had to do reduction of quotes, overlappings and redundancies, upon which I will uh, take a look at the list of quotes and probably we will rename or replace the quotes with uh, any one that is um, relevant for uh, my friends projects as well as uh, sorry my friends coding system as well as mine as well uh, but for that purpose uh, step number six would be to export the uh, project to atlas ti desktop for visualization and reporting. Why we do this uh, is because um, atlas ti desktop uh, provides um, more visualization options yeah, uh, for the purpose of uh, reporting. There are some uh, publications coming up uh, for this yeah, because it's quite 
uh, recently completed. Uh, I'm unable to share uh, the the the. Uh, the papers that we have come up with okay, to demonstrate this as well. Uh, the findings for the research, we can summarize it. Uh, I think Yusra will help me to summarize it uh, after this. Um, and um, how do I say this? Uh, it is to, to just brief, uh, to give a brief overview of what happens next. Okay, This is our experience uh, with the little steps that we manage, uh, there are more uh, experienced users out there uh, who probably can uh, share your own thoughts uh, about what we did. And uh, probably you can also give us some uh, advice uh, after that. So just to sum up, yeah, because this is uh, the part that I will uh, uh, step away yeah, to give way for my, my friend uh, Yusra to share her part, is I will just do a, a little bit of sum up yeah, what, what we did uh, for the project. Yeah. Uh, number one is we uh, created the uh, project and then we added the documents. Uh, and then uh, we invited the project members upon which we decided on the coding uh, strategy. Okay? Uh, based on our discussion as well, each one of us will take one research question. Okay? And then uh, we proceeded to do the coding and uh, revisit the list of codes for the purpose of reduction uh, of codes overlapping and redundancies. Okay. Uh, having said that, I'm going to pass over the session to uh, Yusra. Right. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much, Ani. And also, not to be forgetting uh, Miss Juliana, thank you very much for the opportunity. So I truly feel uh, very honored to be here with all of you. So it's my turn to be sharing some parts of the research. So with regard to the benefits that our research team have uh, attained by using Atlas TI Web, we experienced that Atlas TI Web is not only a tool for supporting qualitative data analysis, is also a companion that has accompanied our research team from the conceptions to the end of our project. With Atlas TI Web, uh, coordinating the coding and progress of work could be done in real time. The margin area shows all the work that we have done on any document. So we could easily see which the segments of data have been saved as quotations, which codes are associated to each quotation, who created each quotation and coding, and more. We have been able to comment and rectify each other's work. And um, with regard to the other benefit that we have attained, Further, the features available in Atlas DI Web are highly useful for the needs and purposes of our study. Atlas DI Web has really facilitated our qualitative data analysis. Thus, we did not have to spend time learning how to use the software, but rather could focus right on analyzing our data. It has actually enhanced our ability to undertake data analysis by presenting multiple means and ways of retrieving, sorting, and interrogating raw data. We could select uh, any segments of data that has captured our interest or might assist us answer our research questions. And we could save these data segments as quotations. We could create as many quotations as we wanted, and each quotation could be of any size we wish. So uh, it's very beneficial for us, but at the same time, we have enjoyed the experience of collaborative qualitative analyzing. We could easily organize our codes in Atlas DI Web by assigning a color to each code. If you can refer to the slide that has been uh, portrayed by Ani, so we have uh, seen so many colors very bright full colors so it will be very good for us to be having an interesting experience uh, using this atlas ti web with the new updates to atlas ti web we could choose from either more color options to distinguish our different codes uh, since atlas ti web 
accepts a wide variety of data formats. It has encouraged us drawing qualitative analytical connections between many different materials from video and images to survey data and to key studies transcript. So uh, this is very important to be considered by many researchers because we will be having uh, abandoned material. So using this uh, Atlas DI web, it will be making our experience of analyzing uh, enjoyable. So we will be dealing with this kind of uh, material in a right way and also an enjoyable way. With Atlas CI Web, our research team put together engaged in all analysis related tasks. So we could conduct teamwork even in challenging period of time, including during COVID-19 outbreak. So we can be having the uh, collaborative work by staying at home. At the same time, we can be engaging uh, to one another. And now coming to the other important aspect relating to our findings. Maybe this is also an important sharing to be considered because we would like to be having uh, this kind of sharing for the purpose of uh, demonstrating the potential aspect of uh, significant for this uh, usage of Atlas TI web. So uh, based on the findings, so we have found uh, several important points, uh, particularly this one. Uh, the first one, uh, no criminality for the traditional and cyberspace bullying. So uh, in Malaysia, so uh, there is no any specific uh, act relating to this cyber bullying. At the same time, there is no any specifications of this uh, traditional bullying and also uh, cyberspace bullying as a crime. So this means that there is no coverage of this criminal justice system uh, with regard to its jurisdictions or authorities to handle this kind of uh, cyberbullying. And um, due to non-existence uh, of any specific law dealing with uh, cyberbullying in Malaysia, but we can be having certain uh, general provisions in certain uh, laws for instance, uh, we have the cyber laws and also the criminal laws uh, to be inclusive of this penal code and computer crimes act, for instance. But uh, based on this kind of uh, existence of these general provisions that can be applied for uh, the cases involving the cyberbullying, but we have to be uh, relying on the ambit of these legislative provisions for the coverage and also the applications of this kind of law to the acts uh, pertaining to cyberbullying. And uh, we have also uh, referred to some kinds of international instrument. So we have referred to the international treaties and agreement, and we have found there is no any specific provision that can be considered very relevant to cyberbullying. Uh, but at the same time, there are also some coverage of the provisions, but there is no specific provision relating to the punishment and also the remedies provided to the uh, victim of cyberbullying. But at the same time, we have noted that uh, Malaysia has not ratified or assessed this kind of uh, international instrument. So having said this kind of coverage uh, in this particular international instrument, so we have recognized that there is no such uh, comprehensive coverage of the punishment or the criminal sanctions uh, in that particular uh, uh, reference or this kind of uh, international instrument. But uh, at the same time, we have found that these international documents, uh, even this kind of very important document to be considered, but there is no any specific criminalizations that can be uh, founded in order to be referred by many countries. But this is to be uh, considered as the main finding of our research with regard to the international uh, instrument. And then maybe I would like to uh, share with you uh, the important recommendation that we have uh, created and we have put forward for uh, the Malaysian Commissions of Multimedia and Communication so this agency is the main agency dealing with uh, 
uh, cyber cases and also the other reports with regard to the cyber offenses in Malaysia. So uh, based on the findings, using this uh, uh, wonderful Atlas DI web, so we have put forward these kind of recommendations. Uh, the first one, the researchers recommend the creations of a specific law to address bullying. And second, uh, the researchers uh, suggest the establishment of working committee as focal point for coordination of cyberbullying cases. Uh, so based on these uh, two major suggestions, so we have detailed out all these kind of stages and also the other features for the specific law. And at the same time, we have uh, came with this kind of uh, recommendations with regard to uh, the important elements that can be covering the atmospheres, mensphere, and the others uh, with regard to the criminal offense of the cyberbullying. So um, this is my final remark. So I would like to recommend everyone to be using this uh, Atlas CI web because I uh, personally found this uh, medium or this platform is very important and also very beneficial for facilitating our uh, research. So with that, I thank you. Um, thank you so much, uh, Yusra. I would like to uh, add something uh, with regards to this because we did not intend to go very detailed into the uh, findings, uh, right? Uh, what we want to share uh, again would be the uh, steps because what uh, uh, reflections after what we did with the uh, other researchers, uh, we found out that there are some rooms for improvement uh, of the strategies that we have uh, conducted earlier. Okay. Uh, for example, uh, the, the determination of the coding strategy, uh, because uh, I ha have also been involved in another uh, uh, in a number of other projects uh, before, uh, but from our experience in the cyberbullying projects, what is the way forward? Uh, way forward for us so that we can um, we can work on improving uh, future uh, projects would be number three here. Okay, number three here, it would be, there are an abundance of uh, coding strategies that we can use. And uh, from our experience using the desktop version as well, we have decided to use the numbering system because there are a few uh, alternatives that we can use. We can use prefix the system. Huh? For example, uh, my friend, uh, he might be looking into law perspective. I might be looking into the factors perspective. Uh, my friend, my other friend could be looking into the international instrument perspective, uh, for example. So we could put prefixes. Okay? Uh, and what we did for this cyberbullying project is we use numbers yeah, because number research question number one we use it for number uh, for all codes uh, that begins with number one so all the codes will be one uh, one the code name one the code name one the code name and I uh, involved in uh, research question number two so I will be working two uh, for that and the third strategy that we uh, find out that it that we're proposing yeah, if you are also interested to use this at CI web uh, in future okay would be to use colors as well uh, because we did not specifically use colors because we were rushing with time uh, at that time that that particular research project, uh, the interviews, the entire interviews, uh, analysis and reporting, it took one month. Okay? Uh, so, uh, but given more time, yeah, we could work on better strategies uh, such as uh, using colors yeah, to depict uh, specific prefixes. Yeah? Based on that, um, because we are using the inductive approach, purely inductive approach, it could mean later on what I have identified for number one could actually be um, applicable for number three uh, instead. Okay, so it would allow for more room for um, for for uh, making sense yeah, of whatever uh, code names that we have uh, identified earlier. Okay, the other thing that uh, number one is coding strategy. Number two that we after uh, conducting this uh, research, we also reflected among uh, the researchers what else can be done. Okay, what else can be done would be the commenting process because uh, at that time some we have added the comments some we leave out the comments because we understand that is what we intended but the problem that we face uh, towards going for um, for uh, reporting okay, was that when we are reporting 
we might be referring to the uh, code name, for example. But then my friend could intend something else. Okay? So we uh, plan for future projects that we can further enhance the commenting for the codings, commenting for the quotations, for example, so that we can further uh, understand and we take a... Um, how do I say this? We take um, for us to better synchronize okay, what we wanted to achieve uh, with uh, our friends. At that point, okay, we understood what our friends want. But in future, in the event we want to replicate the entire process for another project, uh, for example, we definitely go for uh, further uh, commenting and uh, for the purpose of enriching what we wanted to achieve uh, for uh, our uh, research projects. Okay, then um, uh, further reflections. Okay, further reflections. I do find that reflections are very important okay, so that uh, we can uh, improve further. Okay, not to say that our project we, we find it not useful, we find it very useful, but what else can be done would be um, uh, how or what. Uh, how do the researchers find the project to be useful? Okay, and um, what the problems? What are the problems that they have encountered? Okay, so based on that, uh, we have we are also working on one uh, other uh, paper. Okay, to um, itemize okay, the the steps that we uh, have used and for the reflections from the researchers, which I am not ready to share here, uh, but to say that from this one particular project, the way how we use uh, at the CI web, it opened up other opportunities for us as well. For example, this uh, sharing session today, uh, as well as um, for, um, for our uh, other projects uh, as well. Okay, and um, uh, I was thinking uh, because, um, uh, if if uh, Yusra can help me uh, here, is uh, in the event, okay, because you did mention one of the benefits is that we can follow each other's work. There was one time when um, one of our researchers uh, uh, was, was not to say uh, falling behind, but because we, we support each other, yeah, because of we're supporting each other, we also help to uh, go through, okay? go through the the the, the uh, data, okay, and we are able to help there as well, okay. So it's not a matter of I'm working on my own research questions per se. We are also advocating here that the word collaborative is very powerful. Okay, the word collaborative allows us not only to um, work on our own uh, parts or our own um, uh, task that has been assigned that we can also uh, fill in to facilitate our friends yeah, uh, in that particular project. Because at the end of the day, what we want is that full research report, yeah, uh, full research report to show um, that we have already answered the research questions and also objectives. Okay? Um, uh, Yusra, would you like to share something else? Maybe I have missed out because we did the reflections uh, and probably I am missing out some things. Uh, all right, maybe I will be adding something if we get the, this one. Uh, the reminders to be given for the other researchers. So you are very correct, uh, uh, Ani, because uh, I have considered uh, this one, uh, Atlas TI Web as an alert system because we have uh, seen the progress of our friends based on this kind of uh, platform. So we have no need to be asking them uh, constantly, but we can uh, trace their progress based on the usage of this Atlas PI web. Because uh, for instance, from time to time, we can see uh, the coding process. So if one of the researchers have, uh, has not uh, gone to uh, this process, maybe uh, they, they have forgotten to code. So we can uh, trace uh, from the beginning. So it, it can be uh, an alert system for me. So it's wonderful as compared to the previous traditional uh, collaborative research. We have to be reminding, we have to be asking them orally or at the same time, 
uh, want to uh, be having the progress of this report, we will be asking them personally. But uh, this kind of uh, atlas they are where will enable uh, our monitoring and uh, coordinating all this kind of uh, analyzing process. This is uh, Ani Munira. I, uh, I give back to you. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Um, <clears throat> having been involved in this uh, research project and given the trust by uh, MCMC of Malaysia, uh, it gives us great pleasure uh, to inform uh, uh, all the audience here as well, uh, and Juliana, uh, as well as uh, um, at the CI uh, team, uh, uh, Naringa, and everybody else as well, uh, that uh, this uh, project has been completed and uh, our report has made its way to the Malaysian government and uh, we did introduce uh, Atlas CI web for the purpose of our analysis uh, and it is making uh, an impact. Uh, we can't say the impact is immediate. We can't say that our proposal or our uh, recommendations uh, is being put immediately, right? but um, uh, this project could never be completed if we had not decided to use at the CI web. We could, but the impact would not be the same. Okay? Not only we completed it in a short uh, period of time, by using at the CI web, we managed to harness the power of the technology, the harness the power of this uh, application for uh, completing the project on time and uh, also recommending some, um, some actionable, uh, recommendations uh, to the Malaysian government and we take this opportunity to thank our researchers as well. Uh, 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 we have six uh, project members, uh, if I may uh, mention uh, their names, uh, Professor Dr. Wuda uh, Ibrahim, Associate Professor uh, Dr. Osman, uh, Dr. Nur Azlina uh, Matno, um, Dr. Ahmad Shamsu, uh, Dr. Yusramiza and myself. Uh, we are uh, very honoured to uh, have this decided to use uh, at the CI web. And uh, for that matter, uh, I, I the, do we have some more time? Maybe I just uh, want to um, just uh, conclude okay? or, or summarize what, uh, what is the uh, thing that we advocate. Okay? Uh, there are times uh, when um, uh, some other things that are not included in this uh, presentation today uh, on cyberbullying, but uh, I just would like to say a little bit about the huge potential of using this in during the COVID-19 uh, challenges, yeah, uh, whereby uh, not only we can work remotely yeah, during this challenging time, but people are saying that we will be living in this new normal um, uh, moving forward, yeah? moving forward, this will be the new normal. Even if we have done or completed with whatever challenges that we might have in future, but the way that we have been living, this will be the way forward. And I do believe, given the great features of FTCI, which I believe the uh, developers of FTCI as well will uh, add on more features, uh, probably Narika can confirm with us uh, after this, is the uh, potential of using it for a multitude of research areas, a multitude of research, uh, uh, research strategies that you might uh, be using. Um, and I do even have friends who are already using um, at the CI web for their literature review because they have a lot of PDF documents that they want to uh, upload, right? Uh, just to conclude a little bit uh, more uh, about our project on uh, cyberbullying here, uh, we um, we um, given the chance, yeah, we would not change anything that we have decided before. And this is our a little bit of experience. We're not very experts, but we are still learning. Okay? Even today, we're still learning. Some features in Atlas AI Web, we have not even maximized its usage. And uh, But uh, given this little experience that we use it, we find it useful. What more if we can find more features uh, in the future? Okay, And uh, another thing, uh, I... Uh, 
I would like to take a look at the Q and A, uh, probably, or um, maybe we can, uh, yeah. So I think um, I've already received an alert from uh, the uh, organizers. So I will just show my last slide here. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. There it is. Thank you. Thank you so much. That is what we wanted to share about our project. Thank you so much, Shusra and Annie, for that very thoughtful and considered exploration of how to use Atlas in what is a very important uh, subject matter. And obviously, uh, the impacts that are being felt, it's, 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 it's wonderful to see. So we did have a question early in, and uh, we'll do it. you may have covered it a little bit, but let's go back to it and just review a little bit. Uh, from one of our attendees, can the data, documents, codes, quotations, memos on the web be synced to the desktop version? And it, it, it seems like a, it's, it, it's, it's an interesting check assumptions kind of question, right? Actually, the, the answer is more appropriately to be answered by Naringa, but let me just respond a little bit. Why? Uh, because it's a very common question that I get from my uh, friends as well, from my uh, uh, users, other users of FTCI uh, as well, because they know that we're using FTCI web, uh, is that I know it's a one-way one -way export, okay? but I'm not aware if it can be imported from desktop version okay? because the question relates to the projects that we create in web can it be synchronized to the desktop version um i know it's a one-way export i'm not aware whether it, from the desktop it can be exported to uh, the web or not uh, but so therefore my answer would be it will not be synchronized but there is a way around it so that we can bring our project from at the CL web okay to the desktop version. Uh, probably uh, Naringa from Atlas TI can help to clarify this method yes. whether it's uh, in sure the thing. <laughs> Thank you so much for allowing me to jump, to jump in in this conversation. And I'm very pleased to announce that uh, we launched recently a new update for Atlas TI web. So now you can uh, export from Atlas TI desktop and import in Atlas TI web. And you can export, as we used to, to do, uh, export from Atlas to web to Atlas to desktop. But, that, but I'm not sure if I get very well the um, word synchronize, because what I understand synchronize, that is automatically and constantly is uh, synchronizing. It's not like that, because when you are, for example, coding in team in Atlas to web version, definitely you are doing uh, at the same time all together. And in three seconds, uh, it gets updated and you see the code, what Annie did or what I did and so on. But uh, when you want to move from one product to another product, so it's not exactly that, that is synchronized because the desktop version is not a web-based version, it's local. So it's on your computer. And there are advantages and disadvantages of doing so. And um, what I wanted to, as well to warn, let's say I really like Atlas the web and you can do this coding and all this group work is fantastic. It's the best software I know. But when you want to do maybe networks or advanced, uh, some advanced analysis tools, you can very easily export to Atlas the desktop and finish all the analysis. So, but if let's say someone, uh, you are already, Atlas TI users, and you have been working with a desktop version for years. And now after this webinar, you say, oh my God, I love Atlas TI web. It's my dream to use it. So now you can export from desktop to a web, but keep in mind that you may lose a little bit of information. What kind of information and why? So let's say that you can analyze, doc, uh, you can analyze images, videos, audios in Atlas TI desktop but you can do in Atlas T web. So if you import a project with uh, images, Atlas T web will, would say, oh, I'm sorry, I'm not able to work with images, right? So you can import, and I would recommend to do once. This uh, option that you can import from desktop to web is just when you move your project, but it's not back and forth every day, no? Because you will lose some information and you don't want to lose it. 
But if you want to work with desktop version Windows and Mac, you can back and forth on daily basis or on uh, out, every hour if you wish. No? And about wishes that we definitely, uh, we are working very hard in implementing new things, new features, amazing features. I don't want to advance too much because <laughs> I want to have this surprise moment for all of you. But um, anyway, if someone, let's say, want to try it out, um, if I can share for a moment the screen, I want to show just one, one thing. And, yeah, well, and Marika is sharing that I think it's a very, um, a very a thoughtful uh, improvement or update in Etsy Web that you now can import and export uh, projects. I think it will be a very great advantage for the users as well here. Yeah, so fantastic. And uh, keep in mind, whatever you may need, uh, if you feel that, you know what, it's missing networks and I really need this, or whatever, the most craziest ideas pops to your mind, please open Atlas the Web, try it out on your own demo version and send us feedback. Your feedback is crucial. Uh, you know, saying, I need this, I need that. And you, uh, under Atlas the features, if you click here, you will see uh, what is the difference between desktop and web, and um, you can always suggest what you may need. So this is very important for us to know because we have an amazing group of developers who are doing a fabulous job, but they, they need to know what we need, right? And I include myself as a researcher. So feel free always to write us an email and uh, suggest ideas. And yes, uh, we are working hard and we want to implement more uh, options, uh, more uh, tools and uh, include artificial intelligence that can help a lot, uh, definitely coming soon. So uh, yes, 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 we are investing a lot of uh, energy and effort to make it uh, grow. Atlas the web is our baby, no? That is growing <laughs> <laughs> step by step. So thank you so much uh, um, to both of you, my dear presenters. So wonderful presentation. I really enjoyed a lot and uh, see how you took advantage of this, uh, of this software. So um, now I, I leave the power to the presenters. <laughs> Uh, just just like to respond a little bit. Uh, just to respond a little bit about what uh, Naringa has mentioned here, uh, I do find there is a huge potential for ATCI Web. For example, some organizations uh, do not allow for uh, softwares to be uh, installed on their office computers. Uh, uh, there are reasons for that, uh, which we're not going to venture. So there was one time when uh, I come to know about that restriction, but he or she was able to complete her analysis uh, project using FTCI Web, which is very interesting. Uh, I was thinking uh, it's optional, but now it's not optional because it's the tool that can help with a lot of things. Okay. It's outside the scope of cyberbullying, but it is um, uh, a huge potential that I think uh, would be useful as well. We can carry our analysis project at any device that has internet connection. Okay. That's, that's, I think, a very good thing. I, I'm going to uh, return the session to Juliana. Wonderful. We do yeah. still have a few minutes left before we need to wrap up and let everyone get back to their normal routines. Uh, are there any other questions from our attendees? I'll maybe give you a moment on that. And just perhaps while we are waiting for people to formulate their questions, uh, I'm going to share a screen for a moment as well. Again, a thank you to Atlas, to UBCO, where I am from, University of British Columbia, Okanagan, uh, the School of Education Inquiry Methodology from the University of Indiana. A thank you to all of these uh, organizations. Uh, we do have an upcoming presentation on October 12th, our next Explorations in Atlas TI presentation is going to be from Julia Glusing and Ken Riopel, Strategies for Data Analysis Using Networks to Obtain Meaningful Results. If you are in an engineering field, this may be of particular interest for you, and we're going to be actively promoting that as well. That's coming up on October 12th. 
and you can uh, take a look at that offering as well as some of our other offerings that are come upcoming on our insight series on our UBCO International Qualitative Research Toolkit website. So I want to say thank you again to Naringa, to Annie, and to Yusra uh, for that thoughtful presentation. Uh, I'm not seeing any other questions. I know, Naringa, that you thought you might have a few. Uh, do you have any questions for Yusra and Annie that uh, might uh, just help us close out here for today? <laughs> great, great. To be honest, I, I have maybe too many questions. So that's why I feel a little bit um, right now overwhelmed. And I said, Oh, my God, where's my starting point? And I said, I better save all this uh, in my <laughs> private conversation later on with both of them, because uh, definitely, I wanted to uh, take advantage and invite uh, to collaborate with us in uh, some research hub that we are launching in Atlas the Web. And I think that it would be amazing uh, collaboration between all of us. And uh, questions per se, yes, I do have, but very methodological questions, probably not so related with this um, Atlas TI and applications, because definitely I feel very familiar with the software. And I probably want to take advantage and invite all of you, those who are connecting and making this effort, you know, to, to find some time to connect and learn from uh, both doctors that were presenting today, uh, don't be afraid to try it out. Don't be afraid to, to practice. Uh, many years ago, I personally as well downloaded demo versions of different softwares and I played around and said, oh my God, fantastic, it didn't help me or not. So I think that the best you can do, uh, take advantage of technology nowadays. I'm a huge fan of, of uh, taking advantage of uh, not only Atlas TI, I love Trello for organization things and uh, Asana and so on. So I really think that nowadays we have a bunch of uh, amazing, amazing tools uh, available for us. And uh, why don't we take advantage of Atlas TI web? And uh, again, uh, be aware of all trainings that we are offering. Uh, we are offering... Um, about teamwork, we have a specific free webinar organized by product specialist, uh, Susanne Free. So if you go to our website, you can see and register. She teaches once per month in English. And if you want to explore how you can, I don't know, um, learn uh, specifics like how to analyze tweets in Atlas TI or how to do virtual uh, research on Atlas TI. So a bunch of, I ju I'm just mentioning a few of options that we have and we are pleased as well to hear what are your needs. Uh, whatever ideas pops to your mind, if you want uh, more specific webinars, uh, come to me, write to me, and I will be pleased to evaluate uh, this and, and make it possible, no? because I really believe that we have to make this effort all around the world to provide free training and help each other as researchers sharing what we learned, where we made mistakes, because the best way to learn through mistakes, right? <laughs> And uh, not only manuals can be helpful, but not always. So it's great that we are in this network and we are sharing uh, the knowledge. So once again, thank you both of you, Annie and Yusra, for, for making possible to learn from you. It was my great pleasure. I know how busy schedules you are, but you made it. And uh, I really strongly appreciate this. And for the rest of all of you who are attending, remember that just because you and uh, this webinar, you have a special discount for all products we have in uh, Atlas DI. Just in case if you're interested, drop me an email, training at uh, support.atlasti.com. I will write you right away to all, to all who are here in chat. And uh, yeah, I hope that we will uh, meet again in other webinar series, um, general ones or on explorations in Atlas DI. And yeah, I wish you all the best uh, to the great speakers, to the moder amazing moderator, and uh, to all of you, the best of luck to your personal and professional life. So from my part, just have a nice day, evening, or afternoon, <laughs> depending <laughs> from what part you are connecting. 
Wonderful. And wonderful closing comments, Naringa. I'll remind everyone as well, if you have others in your network who would like to um, take a look at this webinar, it will be available on our archive site as well. And do keep your eye on that site for new and upcoming offerings as we go forward in both insights and explorations, including uh, Dr. Fries, who also has uh, 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 the role of Cactus softwares uh, in our archive with IQRT. Thank you again, Annie Juliana, and you. Do I have one minute? Yes, oh, yes, you do, absolutely. Uh, Juliana, even though Yusra and I have presented on Atlas TI Web today, we are also avid users of Atlas TI, uh, other versions as well, uh, other products as well, so you can expect to hear more from us. Mm -hmm. And probably, uh, Yusra, would you like to say something in one minute? <laughs> Okay, uh, I think this is the uh, not the, uh, the finalizing stage, but we have to be considering all these kind of features. So having considered all these uh, wonderful features of Atlas TI Web, I highly recommend everyone to be using this, trying this and exploring it. Uh, so this will be wonderful and will be beneficial to everyone. Thank you very much and see you again. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs>